I was not really a fan of Family Guy, particularly since the newer seasons were just kind of awful to say the least. I have since moved on from Family Guy to other shows that I really liked, which were friends drawn together, you kind of get the gist of it. And to be completely honest, I haven't been doing great. I mean, yeah, I'm surviving, but something felt missing, you know? I'm Sarah Miller, a local artist who usually just draws for their own purposes and project. It feels weird introducing myself, but I think it works. This is my experience with a lost episode from a DVD I found at Goodwill. But before I get to that, I gotta tell you how I even came in contact with the damn thing to begin with. I was driving around town, looking as probably miserable as I could be at the time. Eventually I stopped at a Goodwill and a gas station to refill my gas tank, and decided that a little errand wouldn't hurt. So I went inside looking for some soft drinks and a few snacks. However, I saw one DVD that caught my attention. I was about to reach for it until my hand was grabbed and held up by this weirdo with a fedora and a mask with two void-like eye holes. I was appropriately surprised and creeped out by this freak holding me like this. He then said this to me, Girl of porcelain faith, you have no idea what you're about to do. Please rethink your decision. The Red Sudden will not be pleased. Before he could finish his sentence, I slapped this asshole by the face and kind of yelled at him to leave me be. I mean, what was I supposed to do in that situation? That creep touched me. Eventually, one of the employees came to my aid and told the weirdo to leave. The guy complied, and the employee was very apologetic for the guy's behavior, and offered that he get me the soft drinks free of charge. I kind of told him that I was skeptical, but he said that his boss kind of allowed it if they had a rough day. So I thought, why the hell not? And said, sure. I got the DVD, some Lay's chips, and my soft drink, and paid a bit more than I needed to. But it was out of the kindness of my own heart, so, eh. Eventually I came right back home, and I laid back down on my couch. I was fucking exhausted at this point, and I was all across downtown. It just felt nice to finally lay down and relax for once, you know. Anyways, enough about me. I was considering putting the DVD in, feeling like I could watch some Family Guy once again. Maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be, and oh boy, that was just my nostalgia talking. So I put in the DVD and saw the magic happen. It started off with the intro, and it was immediately apparent that something was wrong. Lois and Peter had no eyes, and Lois's lipstick was missing, and his jaw was very open. Her teeth were like pale yellow sticks, and looked something like they would within the show itself. Peter's appearance made him look scarred, with his regular clothes being ripped and tattered, and his eye and mouth were melted together. He also had very noticeable bleeding scars on his face, and his voice sounded very weak and gargled. It wasn't long until the rest of the family showed up, and holy hell, never thought I'd see Stewie genuinely look afraid before. Brian looked somewhat monstrous, his smile stretching ear to ear, and his eyes were missing just like the family. Chris had no mouth, and looked the least malformed out of the mutated freaks. Meg also had no mouth, but unlike Chris, it was noticeable that it looked like something similar to a mouth. And Stewie was unaffected by the malformations and looked afraid. Once the intro ended, it was only a matter of time before it cut to the home. The outside looked extremely messed up, but not in a gruesome way either. It looked like someone messed with the DVD itself to cause it to glitch heavily, only leaving a mess of colors with recognizable parts of the area. It cut to the inside of the house, and where Brian, Chris, and Lois just kind of sat there. Lois looked especially worried and looked around sporadically. The animation also looked too smooth to be animated by the original people behind it all. Chris eventually started a conversation. 
So, how long will this storm last? I, I, I don't know. The weather cast has never seen anything like this before. You know, it's key to be not afraid of this whatsoever. It could always be worse. But Brian, th that's the thing! What if it gets worse? I don't want something to happen to us during this whole pandemic. Correction. Storm, Mom. Uh oh, shut up, Chris! It honestly seemed pretty normal. And kind of just seemed like an average episode to me. And so far, it felt pretty good to catch up with the series and all. Honestly, I was just surprised it didn't start up being heavily cliched to hell, like other dark episodes like this. Eventually, Peter came down from the upstairs bathroom and got involved with the conversation. Good morning, family. I just woke up within the bathroom last night. What? Why is the sky red? Well, the forecast said that we could be under threat of a possible nuclear attack, so the newscast said to stay inside. Why the hell would they do that? The clarification here is a bit off here, Dad. Well, who would attack Quahog like this? This is an outrage! Now, calm down, Peter. We still don't know what caused this mysterious thing to happen. Maybe it could have been just some sand dust that caused the change color. Brian, that's not how nature works. And how would you know? You're colorblind! You might say that to me yesterday, but not now. I got surgery to see the full colors of the world. Really? Yes, really. Oh, that's a load of balls. How, how would that even work? That's for me to know, and for you to find out. Suddenly, the living room window cracked, causing the red mist to leak in. The family within the living room ran upstairs, but Peter tripped and fell like how he always comedically did. However, he sustained more serious injuries to his face. He groaned in pain before shutting up completely. He suddenly stood up, his appearance from the intro now taking place, with the same black eyes and melted face like features he had. He suddenly started to laugh, with the same gargled and odd voice. Lois screamed before she got suddenly grabbed, but Peter's hands? And got pulled into the mist. Brian and Chris ran into Stewie's room, where Meg and Stewie were seen working on something together. Stewie, we gotta leave! Peter turned into a monster and attacked Lois! We gotta get out of here! I know, Brian! That's why me and Meg have been preparing for this very moment! Stewie suddenly pulled out this snorkel-like contraption, which had this tube poking out, and seemingly had a filter on it. Uh, apparently this mask was turning people into monsters if they breathed it in. Luckily, me and Stewie teamed up to create this gas mask so we could escape. Wow, Meg, you're, you're like the settlers. A moment of awkward silence played. For a moment, I could hear Quagmire's voice. He sounded like he was gasping for air, and sounded ghastly. Was... was anything supposed to happen after that? I don't know. I thought that a cutaway would happen, so... Suddenly, a very mutilated and horrific version of Quagmire bursted through the window, allowing the gas to flow in. And his skin looked pale and crisp. His eyes were red unlike Peter's, and his pupils looked sporadically all around. Eventually, he located Brian and yelled out this comedically angered phrase. I'M GONNA FUCKING KILL YOU, YOU BASTARD! He reached for Brian not long before Stewie shot Quagmire with his laser gun, and made him fall out of the window, screeching. However, it was already too late. The gas made Brian, Chris, and Meg start mutating. Stewie wore the mask before the effects started to happen to him, and he saw how Brian, Chris, and Meg mutating into their form seen into the intro. He screamed and jumped out of the window, running away from the house. He looked around, horrified, and then suddenly saw Joe's silhouette within the mist. He approached the crippled cop and saw that Joe survived the mutation and had the ability to walk once more. Uh, oh 
Holy crap! Y you're alive? Indeed I am, kid. Need a ride? Joe picked up Stewie and carried him towards the city, and ran as fast as he could, as the monsters of Spooner Street started to follow him, including Herbert, Cleveland, Roberta, and everyone else. They all had the same black eyes and looked like they were a part of a large lumbering hive mind. Suddenly the camera started to show the sky and showed the red cracked sun. A face was appearing on it, a wide smile with dot-like eyes and rows of small sharp teeth. And then, suddenly, Brian started to rise up, his gaze fixated at the screen, with the same row of sharp-ass teeth. It was indeed a bloody sunset. I was really shocked, afraid, and impressed all at the same time. I couldn't believe my fucking eyes for for shit. Like, why was it so cool compared to everything else? Granted, it was a bit short, but holy hell, that was badass. I decided to keep the DVD, and kind of spent nights wondering what happened to cause that. Hell, I watched it a few more times and enjoyed it, and man... What I'd give to watch it again. But not all things had been peaceful afterwards. I was at home, watching my TV. Eventually I switched the channel to the news network, and I got the news that a red gas was invaded in my town, causing people to undergo serious malformations and plagues. And then I realized something. Was... Was this creep at the Goodwill's warning? If so, then... What... What the hell happened to cause this to happen? Did I cause this to happen? It's been four weeks since the gas came along. I've been surviving off scraps and junk ever since. I've since obtained a gas mask and the last of my food is now gone and depleted. I've decided to go out to get whatever it is left. And I'm not sure if there will be anything left of my town as I've been fending off what was once my friends and colleagues, now turned into bloody, thirsty abominations. Please, if anyone knows where I am, please save me from this hellhole. If I'm now mutated after this, I'll let you know. The bloody sunset never disappoints the wicked. And that was A Bloody Sunset, written by uh, Alex Codex. Review time. Not gonna lie, that was cool. That was a real. That was a pretty good Family Guy creepy pasta. But the ending sort of ruined it for me, considering the implications. I want to start off with the positives here. For starters, it definitely feels like something that would show up in Family Guy. The characters act like they should. Brian, Stewie, everyone acts the way they're supposed to. Like, Joe, too, and he barely shows up. And I like how at, this isn't another everyone dies type story. Some of them escape, but they're left behind with scars from what was going on. And what was going on actually had a reason. It was Red Mist. <laughs> not the, not, not the creepypasta Red Mist. I was holding in the urge to make a reference to that while I was reading uh, not gonna lie, but it's because of Red Mist, like, forming some sort of pandemic, uh, I, or as Chris says, some sort of storm, which caused these people to become, well, shells of their former selves, and I think that's really fucking awesome. Alex, you did a great job. This was, this is supposed to be a rewrite of a troll pasta, I think? by the name of Family Guy Episode Zero, The Bloody Sunset. And in that story, it was, well, contained your standard cliche bullshit, you know. But, yeah, this was really good. The only thing that I disliked was the whole... Hmm... The, the one thing that I disliked was how, in the ending, it's implied that a virus 
a pandemic spread throughout this lady's town because of a stupid DVD. That's, not only is that physically impossible, but even if that were to happen, it would be unbelievable. Like, it, 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 was, it was really confusing to me. Uh, I didn't like that part. It kind of threw things off for me at the end. But uh, aside from that, that's pretty much the only flaw that I have. I, re I also really liked the protagonist and uh, her actions, her intentions. She was really cool. I liked this... Uh, wait, uh, what was her name again? Oh, what, whatever. This was a... Yeah, this was a great story. Definitely uh, deserves a... Hmm. I will give it an 8.5. Mainly because of the ending. But as always, this is simply my personal opinion. We all have our opinions regarding these pastas. What did you think of the pasta? What would you have done to improve upon it? And as always, I will see you all in the next narration. I love you all. Bless.